News of the efforts of social reformers such as Florence Kelly to eliminate the sweating system or homework traveled from New York to Chicago. And it was in Chicago, while living at Jane Addams Hull House, that a young doctor named Alice Hamilton began to investigate the causes of industrial disease, which she later wrote about in her autobiography. It was my experience at Hull House that aroused my interest in industrial disease. Living in a working class quarter, I could not fail to hear tales of the dangers that working men faced. After conducting numerous studies of lead-exposed workers, Alice Hamilton became the first doctor to correlate disease with specific occupations. I was the only one who had seen the men working on the scotch hearths in the smelters, emptying the bag house and flues, shoveling the white lead from the drying pans. How could I hope that a cold printed report would serve to do away with these pressing dangers? It was her close association with workers which led her to support the efforts of the Workers' Health Bureau. The Bureau, which was the first organization to bring workers and professionals together, insisted on trade union control of health and safety, but it recognized that unions could not change things by themselves. In 1919, Alice Hamilton became the first female professor at the Harvard Medical School. She accepted the appointment on the condition that she'd be permitted to return to Hull House for six months each year to carry on her investigations. Following her retirement from Harvard in 1935, she remained active in many social and political causes until her death at 101. It was interesting to hear Dr. Alice say, now let Harriet go out in the field and gather the information to identify new causes of occupational illness. I will sign the petitions, walk with the protest marchers, have my picture published as a communist, and even go to jail. But you must keep it your work. You are young and must teach and write. 